All right. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us to talk about leveraging CI/CD to improve OpenStack operations. My name is Maria Braccio. I'm product manager for OpenStack at Red Hat. I'm Dan Shepard. I'm the product manager for Rackspace Private Cloud powered by Red Hat. All right. Thank you for joining us right after keynotes. Um, we're excited to be here, excited to have you here. A mix of two companies working together and the open source way and um, to delight developers and you guys and make OpenStack better. So we're going to talk about bringing OpenStack all the way from upstream to the customer in a continuous way. So keeping track of OpenStack changes is a little bit like counting stars. So there's plenty of developers today here at OpenStack Summit. There's plenty of developers committing right now. And I bet some of you are thinking, how can I keep up with all this change? And will my API still be there tomorrow? Um, all good questions and very difficult to keep track on. Testing OpenStack individually is, is very hard. And it proves that it's not, it's probably a futile effort because you, it's really hard to keep up with it. So in comes in a joint way of developing OpenStack and testing OpenStack. And this is what we came here to talk about with you today. So both working with upstream OpenStack, with the Red Hat OpenStack platform, and with you, our customers, our partners, uh, and the ecosystem at large. So what we, um, what we do in our development process really is have our delivery team come in changes upstream, and then those changes go into a version control. And once they're in, it triggers a build and unit testing uh, of those changes. If they pass, uh, then we move through. If they fail, they go back to delivery. We check them, we test them again, move them up, and see uh, once that wall passes, it goes into Red Hat's QE environment. So quality engineers test it uh, into multiple deployments uh, and, and deployment uh, architectures. Um, if it fails, then it goes back to the development, and the same thing goes through. Changes happen, we improve the, the changes and the patches that we submit, and once it passes QA, the idea is that we then distribute it out to our partners. And that is before we go and announce um, that this OpenStack version is GA. And why are we doing this? Uh, so we found partners that are eager and waiting to test every little change that we make to OpenStack before we announce a new release. And the reason is they want to make sure that we know, and they want to make sure that they know all the changes going in, they can test it against their own environment, and uh, they can cer certify faster. For us, we want to make sure that we're testing OpenStack in the use case that we care the most, which is really our customers and our partners. Um, our QE team tests hundreds and hundreds of different um, architectures and different deployment scenarios, but we can really cover the one scenario that we care about. And that's why we partner with folks like Rackspace, to be able to deliver to them pre-release deployments of, uh, of OpenStack. And then once that is ready, then we're ready to announce a release. We know that the release that we announce is uh, really tested, not just in-house, but also with our larger ecosystem. And this is what we're calling distributed continuous integration. It's our ability to deliver pre-release versions of OpenStack to our larger ecosystem of partners and customers and be able to receive feedback from them before we actually go and release. What DCI is trying to do is really change the way that you interact with us, Red Hat, and with OpenStack in general. Um, we have seen that happen in our relationship with our partners. It really doesn't change the work that we do because we've been working together to build OpenStack anyway, but it really changes the way that um, the, our conversations go. So before it's like, what, did you deploy it? Did it work? Did it not work? How did you test it? Uh, where did you see the fall? Can you help me report a bug? Uh, to really elevate that discussion to, oh, here are the logs and this is my DCI deployment, and this is where it failed. So we really elevate the conversation to direct troubleshooting and not fact-finding. So like I said, 
latest OpenStack builds um, get shipped over into our partner sites and our customer sites. Uh, they test in their own environment, which we have no control over. And it really speeds up the, the time for certification. So if you're a partner and you're trying to certify a specific plugin on the Red Hat OpenStack platform, it would, be, it would behoove you to try um, DCI because it allows you to see the changes faster you're testing hundreds of times more than what you originally would test just to prepare for certification. The idea is that you're continuously testing and then you're continually, continuously certifying your solution. It simplifies the upgrade process because, as you know, uh, Upstream has a six-month release cycle and from release to release, a lot of things change. A lot of projects get added, um, APIs may be there or may not, um, and you don't want to find out what happened after the release. So think about it. If today you're testing OpenStack, um, so Newton, um, as it was just released, uh, think about it. If you don't test uh, a new version of OpenStack uh, until uh, the way Okada, uh, until the time Okada is released six months from now, all those changes that are being discussed right here at Summit and that have been discussed at mid cycles and will be discussed in the next mid cycle, you're going to have no idea how that looks on the code, how that looks on your infrastructure, if you're not continuously testing that. Um, it's, it's a shock factor and a surprise factor to test after the fact. What we're trying to say is you should test a lot sooner, you should test continuously, and you should automate your tests. Um, DCI also provides automated feedback to Red Hat on the tests that happen on our partner environment, and that's awesome. So here's what um, uh, DCI looks like today. And let's just say from the line to the right-hand side of the screen, um, or the left-hand side of the screen, uh, it's, open, it's a Red Hat environment and upstream all the way to the left. And to this side, it's a Rackspace environment. So like I mentioned before, we can zoom our code from upstream, from the OpenStack Foundation. You would notice I just changed it to the new logo, catching up right after the keynote. And uh, we, we port it from upstream and we create what we call our downstream um, repos. Whenever we think that we have a release or a pre-release uh, OpenStack kind of ready to go, we put it in a DCI repository. And then uh, after installing a DCI agent on the Red Hat side, on the Rackspace side, sorry, um, we've been closely <laughs> working so much together that it's interchangeable at this point. Now, after installing a DCI agent on the Rackspace um, environment, this agent uh, picks up every new release and all these new changes, and then orchestrates the deployment using Red Hat OpenStack Director of uh, a, an, automated, an automated deployment of an OpenStack cloud, including both the under cloud, the director node, and the over cloud uh, with the infra nodes. Um, we also orchestrate Ceph. Uh, and we run a battery of tests that can include things like Tempest, if you're familiar with that testing of, um, framework for OpenStack, Rally as well, another project of OpenStack. We run Browbeat, uh, an excellent testing framework that is um, also sponsor, or folks from uh, Red Hat work on that. And we also run a battery of tests that form the Red Hat certification um, test suite and any other partner or customer specific test that you want to run can be run with DCI. Uh, after all these tests are done, the results get ported back into this DCI repository so that we can have access to the logs. And then DCI also presents them in a, in a user interface where testers and developers can see what happened to this new version of, of OpenStack that we just got released, this pre-release version what failed, when it failed, um, how do those failures look like, uh, why did it fail, or why did it pass. And it allows you to test multiple different versions uh, of OpenStack. So right now, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil your part. You can tell us which ones you're running, but you can run multiple versions. So what we're trying to do at the beginning, we said keeping up with OpenStack is kind of like trying to count stars is, is, is hard. And the more you count, the more they show up. And you really depend on kind of what kind of instrument you're using to count those stars. Uh, what we're trying to create here is not to remove that, because that complexity is going to be there. But we're trying to create something beautiful that we can do together. 
And with that, I'll leave it to Dan to tell you a little bit about OpenStack. So that brings Rackspace Private Cloud powered by Red Hat, a product we launched back in February that leverages Red Hat's OpenStack platform for us to uh, take the, the Red Hat distribution, we wrap fanatical support around it, and then we deliver it to customers as a managed service. And anyone who's familiar with Rackspace knows that fanatical support is really what we're about. And taking code from, from upstream or from Red Hat's distribution and then applying our practices around it to give customers something that is truly differentiated and production ready. So <clears throat> before DCI, we would, we would build our, our cloud for our customers. We would test every version as it was released from Red Hat. And then we would run these 1,600 Tempest test cases manually. So someone had to log in, click the button. Well, someone had to build the environment, then log in, click the button, watch the run happen, get the results, figure out what failed, why it failed, and go through all of that to figure out if we needed to raise a, a request with Red Hat or if it was something in our configuration or where that problem really s existed. So every time we, we got a new version from Red Hat, then we had to re-kick the environment, uh, leverage a bunch of scripts to, to get everything stood back up. And it took us literally weeks of testing from the time Red, uh, Red Hat would announce the GA of OpenStack platform to when Rackspace can announce the GA. And then once we got done with that, then we had to go back and do the same set of testing all over again for upgrades now. So with DCI, we were able to take those 1,600 test cases, run them automatically. They run daily against a build that is automatically configured from DCI. And uh, anytime there's a failure, it automatically creates a log file, raises the request, sends it over to Red Hat so that their QA team can get involved and start checking it out. With that, we were able to, to go from what was about a month between a GA announced from Red Hat to, to a Rackspace announced for a GA down to, to right about two weeks. In fact, with OSP9, I think it was 12 days. So uh, very much able to shorten our, our timeline just because we have access to, to an automated testing tool. So what does testing look like at Rackspace? 1,600 Tempest tests, you can see kind of over here. Uh, what it looks like, it, they, they run through. Our test cases right now are all upstream. We're currently developing some rack space and, customer, and some of our customer-specific test cases. But everything that we're running right this minute is upstream test cases. We're, some of the things we're working on developing the additional test cases around are really more for our monitoring agents, um, some of the custom use uh, use cases that our customers have for the, their very specific workloads so that we can further validate and make sure that those key scenarios that customers are providing to us are going to work every time we get a new build from Red Hat. So why do we do all that? It really comes down to all clouds are unique. Um, OpenStack means custom. We're all here because we all have some sort of private cloud that we've probably customized in more ways than we want to admit. <laughs> we have hardware variations. We have networking changes. Uh, everyone has a different use case. So with all of that, you, you really end up with complicated deployments. Even at Rackspace, where we, we standardize and use reference architecture and build based off of our own best practices, all of our customers end up being unique at some point. Whether it's in their data center, whether it's you know, on some, some hardware stack that, that we're not running anywhere else on any other customer, everyone ends up with some unique thing. So having the ability to get to a point where we're testing that unique thing in an automated fashion is really important uh, for enabling us to accelerate adoption for our customers and keep moving them to the latest and greatest OpenStack. So in addition to that, it, uh, as Maria indicated, we have a lot of collaboration between Rackspace and Red Hat. So uh, over the last 18 months, we've, we've connected developers, we've connected QA resources, we've connected sales teams, uh, really everyone to sit down and say, how can we make this better? How do we do things better? So building on that, DCI comes out. We, we start using Rackspace hardware and the Rackspace data center. Uh, but Red Hat's managing the deploy for us through the DCI tool, so, so we've given them the hardware, they're running the deployment scripts. Uh, we come in with our test ca cases, those result in bugzillas for Red Hat to go squash. We don't even have to pick up the phone and call them, we don't have to create log files, it, it's just there. We can just track, hey, these bugs are moving forward, all well before a GA happens from the code, from, from Red Hat upstream. So the end result really comes down to 
Rackspace testing, Red Hat patching, and then Rackspace verifying what has been patched, all before a customer ever even knew there was a chance of having a problem in the next release. So um, before we move on, my mic. So it, in, in uh, sorry, our mics are. In, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what we are doing, what we're trying to tell you is testing OpenStack manually is a bad idea. Automating your deployment of OpenStack is a good idea. Automating your tests of OpenStack is a good idea. And not only is it good, it's going to save you a lot of time, even though it, it's, it's a lot of time consuming to actually do it. It's going to save you a lot of time in the future. It's going to help you keep up with the pace of OpenStack. And uh, as Dan mentioned, not just not only we're just uh, collaborating with Dan and, and Red Hat and Rackspace to make OpenStack better, but we also have another list of partners that we're doing the same thing with. So who benefits? It's really OpenStack. Every time we test with a partner and we find issues with a partner before our GA release, we're able to make those changes sooner in the release cycle and sometimes those changes actually get merged in the release cycle that we're um, testing in, which is fantastic for our customers, for our partners, but for OpenStack in general. I mean, we, we all talk about it you know, quite a bit with software developers, right? And anyone who, who's working directly with developers in your organization, developers are, are out failing fast. They're, they're creating test-driven development, trying to test early, fail often. It's applying that same method. and and mentality to your infrastructure. So the, the option of seeing that the next build of OpenStack, the, the daily build coming from, from Red Hat's upstream distribution, uh, Red Hat's distribution gives you this idea of, hey, I'm going to see that, I'm going to, to address it before I get it in front of developers, before I get it upstream to my customer, uh, downstream to my customers. You, you get to see every day, you get a peace of mind of knowing that uh, things are failing or things are not failing. Uh, and hopefully you start off with a lot of failures early, early in the release, and by the end of the release, right before GA happens, nothing's left that's failing. But generally, that, that's getting to that point earlier is very interesting for, for the engineers working on OpenStack and for your downstream customers. Yeah, and also uh, the way that Red Hat works is uh, obviously upstream first for us. And what we're trying to do is get to a release of a new um, uh, upstream-based uh, OpenStack uh, distribution. And we want to do that release a lot faster. We want to test as much as we can, like I said, in the use cases that we care about the most, which is our customers and our partners. And we want to sort of bring also uh, the customers and partners cl closer to upstream to start working on the latest and greatest as soon as possible. So. We talked about distributed continuous integration. So in, in a nutshell, we ship these packages before uh, they're GA ready to customers and partners. Uh, so what is the next step? Also is enabling our customers and partners to build OpenStack um, the way uh, OpenStack Infra builds OpenStack. So in comes Software Factory. So host your own health, uh, OpenStack Infra. If some of you are OpenStack contributors, you're uh, familiar how OpenStack Infra works. Uh, you've probably heard about Garrett and Sewell and others, and know that the um, gating uh, process of, test, uh, of building and testing OpenStack is what drives this wonderful code. So what we're trying to say is we're packaging an OpenStack Infra-like environment on your own data center so that you can test and build also your own changes and patches. So if you look at this graph, it's pretty similar to what I showed you before, uh, where we send you this uh, Red Hat pre-release uh, patches, uh, uh, sorry, pre-release uh, approved version of OpenStack. But also we now give you the ability to build your own uh, changes to OpenStack using Software Factory and then deliver those to DCI. So DCI can also run the deployment of that change that you did and you can leverage the same tests um, that we're doing right now. And you can do that um, sort of uh, interchangeably or, or um, 
intermittently. One, one time one coming from OpenStack, another time uh, bringing in your changes, maybe one of them running uh, Red Hat OpenStack version 8, or then 9, or then 10, and then testing your own changes on 8, or 9, or 10, if you so wish to, to support that and see how those behave. And this is the UI of Software Factory. Um, it, it basically, it's, if it looks a lot like Garrett, it's because it is. Uh, and then um, also leverages and integrates uh, all these other tools that, that help you build your own uh, either patches uh, or changes to OpenStack or to your own distribution. And so then what now? So we want to enable the customer directly. We want to be able to let customer handle their configuration as code. Um, make this, uh, given the customers a Garrett uh, uh, infrastructure so that they can build their code that way and test it out that way. Uh, and use DCI as a gate for testing and making sure that passes that CI gate uh, before you commit a change. And then merging. And then at the same time, from a DCI perspective, have used DCI to provide the continuous delivery of those changes, um, testing your workloads, leveraging the test cases that you were already testing with, whether they were your own um, tests or some that were provided by Red Hat. And so what's in it for me, what's in it for you, what's in it for all of us? How do customers and partners benefit? You can track and test all of your changes, you can validate, um, use your changes, uh, can be your configuration, can be new code, um, can be simulated workloads, whatever you're doing. And uh, you can integrate with tools like Browbeat, which I mentioned before. So do even more um, rigorous testing and benchmarking your changes, seeing how your OpenStack Cloud behaves uh, at some point, and then before the change, and then after the change, and then after a certain amount of time after that change. Uh, and really just give you more data to work with and make decisions with. And how does OpenStack in general benefit? You were basically allowing for the OpenStack 9 uh, release, which um, was Metaka based, and for the OpenStack Newton release, which is going to be Newton based. We were giving uh, feedback from customers and partners that we never gave before, mainly because that testing happened manually. That feedback happened a lot slower and we just didn't have a way to automate all these changes or to test as many times as possible because testing OpenStack manually takes time. Um, I remember uh, the first time that we had DCI uh, up with Rackspace. In a weekend, we basically got more data and more test results that Rackspace had gotten in sure. months. I mean, it, we went from executing maybe a test every couple weeks just because of resourcing and time from from having an engineer working on it to we could get two to three in a day. <laughs> so all of a sudden, this feedback cycle started happening, and we were, we were giving poor people like Gonnery, who's sitting in the front row here, the, just piles of data that, that would have taken us weeks to come up with uh, on the old system. And Gonnery's now trying to figure out, well, how am I supposed to parse this and find what's meaningful to change first? I mean, it, there, there's just so much data coming in. So, but that's his problem, not mine. Yeah, we've definitely <laughs> generated a bunch of other new problems, but it, it's all good. Like, it's good problems to have. Uh, similarly with Rackspace, we also had other partners that were interested in DCI because their main focus was not producing a fanatically supported cloud, but actually operating their own cloud. And, uh, and their feedback was, well, we needed to be Red Hat certified. And in order to go through all the process for Red Hat certification and all the tests that the Red Hat certification require, they had to spend a lot of time and a lot of resources. And by resources, I not only mean um, sort of dedicating their data center to do that, but they had a team of over six engineers, including a project manager, to orchestrate when the test will happen, when will, it, when will they um, come to fruition. It took them almost three to four months to achieve certification and we release every six months. So the cadence was, wasn't really aligned, and catching up was hard. So um, the, the first time that we did this with this other partner, their feedback was, well, now what are these six engineers going to do? And our reply was, get them to automate some more tests <laughs> to put them in. 
Um, so all, all very, very good feedback. And, and of course, our partners now say, OK, now that this is solved, here's this other problem. We have more data. We want to parse it. We want to make uh, smarter decisions with it. We want now these changes to make it into this release, because you already have the results. So go, go to the mid-cycle and push for this change. So all great things. We were able to take our engineers and send them out to go talk with customers and start building those test cases against the customer use cases that we didn't necessarily have full vision of before, because there, there just wasn't time. So now we have customers going out. Our, we have engineers talking with customers trying to understand more of the use cases so that we can pull them back into DCI and, and create more of those meaningful tests and get more data back upstream for Gonnery to, to, to figure out how to, how to handle. <laughs> so is it open source? Is my name Maria, of course. Um, the source is over here. It will be provided with your slides. Take a picture uh, and you can get to that. Both DCI and Software Factory are, are open source. Some of the developers are here. Raise your hand. <laughs> and uh, that concludes our session. Do you have any questions? So one of the questions that, that I've heard is, what about uh, using DCI against upstream OpenStack as opposed to using packaged uh, Red Hat distribution? So what we're doing, um, what we can do is um, it definitely run um, DCI against upstream and package upstream, or RDO, which is a package distribution of upstream. Uh, and do that sort of at the beginning of the cycle because uh, at the beginning of every, ci every cycle, we don't Red Hat doesn't necessarily have um, a release candidate uh, ready or as often as we do at the end of the cycle where we have many release candidates ready and open multiple times per day because we're sort of committing a lot faster. At the beginning of the cycle, there's a little bit of a lull, trying to figure out what changes we want to commit, what changes are coming. Uh, maybe those are not even passing testing, so it's really not meaningful to deliver those to, to customers and partners. But maybe they want to see, well, what's going on upstream? So we can start distributing RDO, which is really upstream packaged. And then we can start seeing how that behaves on that environment. The idea is that this is a test dev scenario, um, is a test test scenario. So if the CI fails, it's, it's OK. We just want to see where it fails so that we have a heads up that we need more testing. We need, more, we need to look more into these changes. We need to look more into these APIs, et cetera. So yes, we can test against upstream. Any other questions? I can keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a question? Yes, hi. Um, how does it help PostGA? And then also, could you talk a little bit more about how it would help you know, from upgrades? Why upgrades are so if so, you're going from 9 to 10 or 10 to 11? Yep. So the question is, how does it help? How does DCI help PostGA? And how does it make upgrades easier? So PostGA, uh, we don't really have a concept of a static code PostGA. We may say this is a release 9, but later after that, there might be um, bug fixes. There might be security patches. You know, that release 9 or 10 version is not steady. So you still want to continue to test on that one. So, so that is helpful that way. Uh, another way that is helpful is we have partners that develop applications on top of OpenStack. So you want to make sure that that OpenStack is there, sort of running underneath. And then you test your applications on top of it and make sure that with each change that happens in OpenStack on a certain release, bug pa patches and fixes, that application sort of remains whole too. And then how does it help upgrade? Well, imagine this. Once you have DCI running with OpenStack 9 and you have been continuously testing with all the changes that we're pushing between version 9 and 10. If your CI is sort of passing, then you know um, that you're going to be that much closer to, be, uh, to have a passing um, OpenStack 10, for example. The idea is that we don't ship you a whole new version. So we don't give you, here's OpenStack 9, here's Red Hat OpenStack 10. But we're giving you hundreds of little incremental changes to that so that we ease you into the upgrade. And then from, from a Rackspace standpoint, we, we treat upgrades as kind of two pieces. There's, does the next version of OpenStack meet all of the requirements for our consumers and for, for our operators so that we can say, yes, this is something that, that is production ready and supportable? Answering that question is what we're leveraging DCI for. The next, the next part of that question is, is what happens during the upgrade process and does that break anything? 
So <laughs> right now, we leverage DCI to shorten that cycle of, is this ready for our, our users? And then we come in and run a manual upgrade behind that to say, OK, let's, let's validate that the upgrade process works. And we, so we take, we take our 1,600 test cases. We run a smaller subset of those. And then we do the, before we do the upgrade, then we do the upgrade, and then we run that smaller subset again. So the idea there is, you know, we ran 500 test cases, we had 495 passes and five fails. Before, we ran it again at the end, we had 495 passes and five fails. So, so things are the same. So it becomes this two-stage process. So you'll see there are times that we announce, hey, GA is ready, all new deploys will be the next version, and then it'll take another week or two before we'll announce the upgrade path. It's because we're going back and retesting and maybe working in partnership with Red Hat to fix something that went wrong in the upgrade process. So. And we really rely on this feedback. Also. How do you manage the CI scenario? So you talked about your 1600 test cases, but now you have less than 50 test cases. So now they're going to be 70 and then how do you restrict the time? So how long is it going to be for the rest of the cases? And how do they grow over time? Hmm. So the question is, with growth of CI-CD test cases, you're, you're creating really a longer running test scenario. So the answer is you'd run less builds in the day. And if you, you find that, you, that if we found that, hey, we're not getting through all the testing we want to get through, we would potentially add a second, DC, a second CICD environment to, to split that workload. We're not there yet. But if, if that's a good problem to get to, that means I have lots of testing happening and we have a high confidence in what we're building. So. so Right now it's early. We're still building our first set of kind of customer use cases. I expect patterns to emerge there, and eventually I'll get to a point where the customer use cases won't necessarily require additional scripts, right? Yeah. It'll be, oh, we'll, we'll just flag customer X on, on this script that we created for customer Y. So. So uh, also, I think you asked also about uh, different um, kinds of customers and how do you manage that growth. So when, uh, w once we had uh, DCI up and running with Rackspace, one of the um, ideas that came actually from Laren, from Rackspace, was, well, now I have all these different customer deployments. Can I have a DCI agent running a specific deployment for a specific customer where you only run the test cases that are relevant for that deployment? And then can I have that going? And our answer is like, you can have as many DCI agents running as many different um, OpenStack um, architectures per customer, and then limit your test cases to whatever's uh, relevant there. The number of test cases is going to grow. I mean, OpenStack is growing. They're building more things. Those things have a test case associated to it. So that's a problem that's going to continue to Did Laren pay you for that shout out? I mean, no, he's, I he's back. Managing a support team in, a, in San Antonio, so I thought maybe he paid you for that. <laughs> no, he didn't. But um, we find that uh, with Rackspace, and uh, I can say Dell because we also announced with them. Dell is another partner that is that is doing this. They actually give us a lot of this, a lot of um, new requirements because now they have seen this. It's like they have seen the light. Like, oh, this is great, and it freed their minds from a lot of other busy work. And it seems like their minds are just as busy just creating other busy work. Not busy work, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Just figuring out other problems to solve. Absolutely. And to continue to make OpenStack better. Hey, I was just wondering how complex the setup is for, for this type of infrastructure. Is there an expectation of kind of dynamic access to metadata and or use some automation within the infrastructure? Yeah. So our development team for DCI is actually right here, so you can really talk in depth about that. But I can tell you that when I approach a partner or a customer and they ask me about, I want to install DCI, what do I need? Um, really what we tell them is we need this DCI jump box that can be a VM. So uh, our, our, um, our footprint in your data center is as big as a VM. And then everything else, in terms of how does that deployment look like, can be as many nodes as you have in your OpenStack deployment. And it can, have, it can be a mixture of virtual or, or, or bare metal. And if you want to certify, for example, Cinder plugins, well, you're going to need to have the, the gear that goes along with that. But we don't, um, we don't tell you that there's a bare minimum. Uh, in fact, I have some partners running, um, certifying their software um, SDN uh, plugins. And so their OpenStack deployment is 100% virtual. So this, this thing is just uh, VMs. For Rackspace, the most complicated part was figuring out how we were going to get 
uh, director built out inside of our existing deployment process for bare metal deploys. So once we worked through that, which was just, you know, figuring out, oh, how does orchestration happen now, and how, are, how do we make sure that we keep our tools in alignment, it was very easy after that. Yeah, to have access to Rackspace hardware, we found out was hard because they <laughs> want to keep their hardware up and running 99.9% of the time. Any, Any other questions? Hi, the question was, how, how much time is it be, 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 between an issue found in a customer side and then the patch or the fix seen upstream? Well, isn't that the question that we all want to know? And the answer is like, it depends on the patch, right? It depends on what the issue is and what, what, how we're tracking it. I tell you, though, that with DCI, the time it takes to actually report that issue upstream is a lot shorter because we're finding it sooner. And then if you find it during the development cycle, so if, if, if somebody commits a patch during, for example, right now, the Okada cycle, I'm able to send that patch over to Dan uh, in, in Rackspace, and we see that failing. That is logs that we can just push upstream and say, hey, this failed here. So think about that before it actually um, uh, makes it to the product. So that, that time, I can tell you, is faster. The time to fix it is <laughs> another thing. Um, it, it could be, yes, if we're, if we're using, for example, RDO. Like, I cannot tell you that a patch that lands in today can be in a week in one of our puddles, in, in one of our um, pre-release versions, because we do a lot of that testing ourselves. So it may be that we catch that, um, that bug before it goes to our customers. So it may not even go there. Um, and in that, ca in that case, we, we report it upstream right away. When and the it stars may be align. That, Yes. <laughs> and it may be very well be that somebody at Red had made that freaking patch that then messed up in the customer, which is, which is what we find, right? Because we, we test the patches that, that we made in our own gear, as well as all the third-party ECIs up from upstream. But we test it on our gear. But now we're just, honestly, just extending the QE environment that we have to have our partners, too. And in the case of, in the case of Rackspace, um, there's some gear. In the case of Dell, it's a lot of gear. So, and we're extend, expanding it to other partners as well. Two questions. How long does it take to run each build? Uh, using DCI, and then the second question is, how long does it take, uh, does it run a patch of the build, or does it run the whole build? Um, okay, so the first question is, well, it depends on what kind of OpenStack you're deploying. So it depends on, on, on how does your environment looks like, right? Oh, for the 16,000 test case, so oh, in the, your the specific architecture, how long does it take to run a build? Once everything's built out, the, the run takes, uh, I want to say like 20 minutes, and then it takes a little bit longer for us to look through the logs and make sure that everything ran and pull the file out. Uh, so maybe an hour total. The deployment, no. So the deployment in front of that, we basically get uh, close to two runs a day right now from build the environment, run all the test cases, collect all the logs, build the next environment. So. It's going to vary on the number of nodes that you're, you know, building, right? Yeah. And, and, and we're building on physical nodes, and we're, so everything gets redeployed. We're, and the hardware we're using is not bleeding-edge hardware by, by intention because we are trying to support a, a wide variety of use cases, right? So. And then the second question was, do you run the entire build, or do you just run the patches? No, what we're, uh, so the question is, does it run uh, just a patch or does it run it from the beginning to end? And the answer is, right now, uh, we, can, we run it from beginning to end. We, that's a good use case to just run 
whatever change. But because we do the orchestration with director, we just sort of test deployment and, and do it all over again. So any last question? I think we're at time. Thank you so much for coming, and I hope you have a great OpenStack Summit, and walk a lot, and enjoy the week. Thanks, everyone. Thank